next speaker is uh, um, going to. It's also a startup. It's not even, uh, also thinking about Indiegogo, and and it's a subject that's close to uh, to my heart: uh, food, cooking. So he's um, still in uh, SMU. SUTD, oh, the worst mistakes ever. SUTD, that's very good. And, um, and he's come up with this idea called the sous chef. So let's uh, give a hand to Tusha. Thanks. Okay, uh, so first of all, thanks, Calvin, for giving me this amazing opportunity to be here and share my experience. Because uh, this is not something which I do often. Like, I'm, I'm still in my university finishing my undergrad. I'm in my final year. So, so today, uh, before I start, I would like to highlight something. So you'll see that my slides are all quotes by various entrepreneurs or tech-related people. Uh, there's a reason why I made my slides like that, because when I was kind of stepping into this whole startup ecosystem or um, trying to be an entrepreneur, I used to go and read a lot of articles and uh, watch videos. So I always come across a lot of these quotes, and I was like, uh, during, during that time, I was like, oh, OK, it sounds interesting. Uh, every company has a rocky beginning. But I had no clue like, what that rocky beginning will be uh, in real life. So a little uh, background about myself. So I came to Singapore. So I, I'm from India. So I came to Singapore around seven years ago to do my diploma in uh, electronics. Um, and. Uh, over the last seven years, I have been working in a lot of robotics projects and uh, worked with a few other companies as intern or as uh, part-time researchers. So my workstation was more or less like this throughout the last uh, couple of years. But there's something interesting about this picture over here is that this whole setup is inside a kitchen of my Dover hostel. Uh, it's, I mean, nothing special. It's because we didn't have much space to put my stuff in the room. Um, and Together with this, I also had this passion about cooking. I used to cook a lot. At first, it was necessity because I had to survive here. Cost of living is high. I was an international student, so I had to cook a lot. So that's the kind of time when I thought, like, I'm doing robotics on one side of it, and on the other hand, I love to cook. But a lot of times, I don't have the time to cook, or, you know, like, I have to cook for a lot of people. So that's when I thought, okay, how about I combine these two things? And I started to think further. And uh, as this quote says, I, I just started doing this. Like I started to think more about this. And that's when I developed this concept. So this, is, this was a conceptual phase and, um, about my idea or my vision that I want to make something which can automatically cook meals for those people who are busy. So this one, we went till James Dyson national level. Uh, we were the, one of the national finalists. But then again, this is only a concept. So we had to move further. So, I mean, I was, I was a very technical person, but I had no knowledge about market or how do you start a business, uh, how do you raise investment, but basically zero knowledge about the startup, uh, startup ecosystem. That's when I met Ashwin, and uh, Ashwin was an undergrad during that time. I mean, he just finished his studies, and he was willing to take a year break. And uh, we used to conduct a lot of robotic hackathons and workshops in India, so I used to fly back, like, tries of uh, three to four times a year and like try to share whatever I have learned as a technical person and help other university students. So that's when I met him and uh, he was willing to join me in this journey. And I, to I invited him to come to Singapore and stay with me for a few months. Um, and yeah, we started trying. So a lot of you guys, like the other speakers, have been saying that you have to try. We also started to try. And we failed a lot of times. But eventually, we came up with this prototype. So this prototype, what it could do is you can store up to six uh, raw eggs. Uh, it could store, uh, it could keep a milk refrigerated, and it had a butter container. So what it could do is it can make scrambled egg automatically. So basically, you set a timer on your app. Every morning you wake up, you have scrambled eggs ready. So we did this. During that time, we had no idea like how, to, how do you market this or anything. We, it was like a project we did. And then we started getting rejected every day, like literally every day. So um, we applied for iGEM. We applied for like tons of accelerators. Um, I think, yeah, we almost got around 30 major rejections. But we kept going forward. We were like, OK, maybe the day will come soon. And uh, even during this whole time, there was an interesting thing that, I mean, my own classmates, they copied this whole idea and made it their final year project. So we had two sous chefs in SUTD <laughs> during one time. So this is the kind of time when we realized that uh, 
startup is something where you have no clue what's your product, final product. You have no idea what who are your customers. Like just now, um, um, one of the other speakers was mentioning, like you know, you just you hope that that's your target market, but eventually you will explore more. And then we did not we didn't know how to make money out of this whole journey. Now, uh, I was mentioning about iGEM program and uh, accelerator and all these things. So when me and Ashwin were getting rejections like every day. Um, on top of that, there was this whole problem that Ashwin's parents were pushing him to go back to India and get a regular job because of financial reasons. So one fine day, Ashwin tells me that, uh, Tushar, I'm really sorry, I have no choice but to go back to India. I was like, so does that mean that are you going to like, you know, continue working with me from India or you're just leaving me alone? He said, oh, I have to leave you alone. So it was the biggest hit because um, the kind of sacrifice I had to make as an international student was a lot to do this. And one fine day, I was all left alone. Uh, with a breakfast maker, which you know got rejected a few times. Um, so that was um, kind of the point when I had to figure out, do I want to continue this or not? Am I prepared to do a startup journey or not? And uh, I had to start over. I decided to start over again. But this time, I changed certain things. So again, I put together a team. I'll talk about it later. And then I thought, OK, let's, that's, when, that's when the actual sous chef came. And uh, probably some of you have already gotten a chance to see in our booth. It's an ingredient dispenser. Uh, currently, it's an ingredient storage and dispenser, which can assist you while you're preparing to cook. And we launched the Indiegogo campaign in uh, November last year. I mean, this was a very low profile Indiegogo campaign because we wanted to know what's the experience and what it takes to do a crowdfunding platform. Um, because you can read a lot of articles, but to experience it, you really have to try. So we thought, okay, we, we didn't have any investment, we didn't have any money to do this. Uh, no PR firms backing us, nothing. So we, took, we spent around five weeks to build a very minimum functional prototype. Uh, that's the one in the poster outside there. We built the video ourselves. Um, uh, we found one of my co-founder's girlfriend to act in the video. And that, that's how we pulled everything together and we just launched it one fine day. Then we just kept our hopes, you know, like to the bare minimum. We were like, okay, we just launched, let's see how it goes. And we were surprised that we actually got around 20 pre orders, and uh, I think four or five from Singapore, seven from US, some from Middle East, one from Africa. Like all around the world, we were like getting, and these were like not marketed. These are like just people browsing through Indiegogo, they found it and they just ordered. So this is the device. Uh, this was the first prototype which we launched on Indiegogo. Now, this during this whole journey, there were like five important lessons which I feel I learned um, as a person, not as a you know like a CEO or co-founder. I, I see this as a project now. Even now, I see this as a project. This from uh, Sam Altman uh, is like the founder uh, is the CEO of uh, Y Combinator now. He says that whenever you want to do a startup, first try to do it as, do it as a project. Do it for a few years or few months till you know that you are actually going to continue for the next few years. Are you really willing to take the risk? So that's why I always say that it's, it's my project. It's like my dream project, which I'm trying to achieve. First lesson was taking calculated risk. Now, why I'm saying it's calculated risk, but not risk alone is it's easy to say, okay, you should take the risk and just try. But a lot of times from a, you know, like personal problems or financial issues, you are not able to do this. So the ta calculated risk which I took was, uh, as I mentioned, I'm an international student. I already had, um, at this point, I, I already have like you know, around 80,000 of tuition fee loan from DBS. The risk I took was I took a gap year in between. Now, gap year by right, you're not supposed to pay. But instead, what I did is I had to, I did a rough estimation. If I stay in SUTD for three and a half years, I have to pay a certain amount of money. If I add one more year to this, which becomes four and a half years, I decided to take less number of modules in each term so that I have most time to spend on sous chef. And then I did an estimation. If I take a complete gap year, I have to step out. I don't get to use any resources which I have from the labs. I have to fund the entire hardware startup myself. And at that point of time, we did not have a single dollar of uh, funding. So I took the, uh, took the chance of stepping into this in this way. Even now, I'm, yeah, every month I have to pay to cover up my tuition fee loans. So I mean, this is my tip. If you want to take risk, uh, try to think through what are the consequences you will have to face. Don't just blindly jump. At least be mentally prepared that you know, like a shitstorm is going to come. Just be prepared that you hold on tight. 
Second is appreciating failure. So when we did the um, scramble deck thing, uh, the device, we failed like a lot of times. If I wouldn't have appreciated that failure, I wouldn't be standing here right now, sh you know, sharing my experience about my sous chef 2.0. Like I would have just gone back to my studies and like continue whatever I was doing as a regular student, or probably like actually I would have been working in some company because I would have graduated last year. So when you feel some, I mean, so this is something which I try I try to tell my uh, classmates or even like primary or secondary school students when I teach them part time that don't be afraid, you know, don't be scared to fail. Like if you don't fail, you won't know like how to succeed or what's the joy in having a success. This is very important, building a team. So if you read startup articles, they always say that you should build a team around very technically sound people. But um, I, I have a bit more different belief. So when I started a team, I thought, I asked myself like, my founding team should be someone who can relate to me emotionally as well, not just in technical teams. Because it's very easy for me to go and hire a CTO who, who is like damn good in technical stuff. But what happens if he cannot share the vision or I'm not able to relate to him emotionally. So actually he's busy taking photos for me there now. So, I mean, our girlfriends are jealous because we go for dinner dates alone, we'll go for, you know, photography and stuff. So that's the kind of thing I'm talking. So when you build a team, it's very important that you're able to share non-technical stuff as well. If you don't do that, one fine day when he's pissed with me, he'll just leave me alone again. Next is hard work is an understatement. Now, this is because when I started uh, this whole journey, my parents told me, are you prepared to, you know, you have to put in a lot of effort and things like that. I was like, yeah, I'm sure. But uh, I did not know that it's this difficult. Like there are times when um, I think I had to sit continuously for like almost 36 hours on the same table and like get all the technical renders and CAD drawings out for certain deadlines. And sometimes you just feel like crying. And I mean, I'm, I'm just accepting. I have sit alone and I used to cry sometimes because you just can't take the pressure anymore. One side, your grades are going down. I used to be a perfect GPA holder in diploma, when I was doing diploma. When I came to university, I have been failing like almost every semester. It's just because I don't go for classes or I don't attend the final exams. It's not because I didn't study. It's just that I was so involved in this. I was putting in so much effort that my other side was falling. So if I, I always was scared. Like if I don't uh, bring this sous chef thing up, what happens like, you know, if it fails? I don't, I won't even have a degree. So yeah, hard work, I mean, Startup is a different hard work. It's not the conventional hard work which we think it is. Then take a step back when it's necessary. Uh, why I say this is when the scrambled egg maker failed, I kind of took a step back. I took a three to four month break just to think through like what I have to do in future. Do, do I want to continue startup? So you have to, you know, you have to go back in time and you have to try to think what are the mistakes you made. And are you willing to correct the mistakes or you just want to keep this as a learning experience? So that's when I stepped back and I, I talked to myself. I was like, okay, I, I'm, I really want to see Sushef a success. At least, you know, one person, if they use it and they are telling me, like, you have changed my life, I'm, I'm more than happy. But for that, you need to, uh, if you are stuck in some point of time where you don't know um, what's next, you have to, like, slow down or step back if it's necessary and try to think through, like, why you are doing it. In, in, in life, or what's the value it has in your life. Then, yeah, Sushef is still learning. I mean, we are not, uh, we don't even have like a fully finished product yet. It's still in our second iteration of the prototype. We are learning a lot of things. Recently, we expanded our team. So now we are eight member team. So we are bringing in more uh, IoT based stuff into this. Now, um, apart from the whole Sushef thing, I would like to, I mean, lot, even Calvin has been mentioning about parents and kids. So, uh, so during this journey, I met a lot of interesting people and uh, one of these uh, ventures, they newly started in Singapore, it's called the Keys Academy. So I, I think you know about it. So uh, when I talked to the founder of Keys Academy, uh, I was quite surprised like what they are trying to do. Uh, they are trying to encourage kids to learn tech or be creative or be an entrepreneur from the age of four. Now that's not something which we come across every day. So I, I actually teach, so even before coming here, I had a class of uh, three students, they are only six years old. Now, 
The six-year-old girl, uh, she wrote yesterday that it can be frustrating. She, so she's writing on the whiteboard. She was writing, it can be frustrating, it can be annoying, it can be challenging. But if you don't have the patience, confidence and perseverance, you won't get it there. But at least, so it's like in a very bad grammar, but she wrote it. I was really surprised, like, uh, as, he, as Calvin mentioned, that kids already are creative at that age. But when, we, when they are growing up, if the parents or as teachers, when you try to suppress this, they cannot reach there because by the time they are 20, they just know how to score more in class or like, you know, how to be a perfect GPA score. I'm not telling because I don't have a perfect GPA. It's just because, uh, I mean, I, I know some of my friends who have a perfect GPA and they are, I mean, they are doing well. They have like really good jobs. I'm just saying as a personal experience that a lot of times they come to me and they say, I, I don't know, like, I wish I could do this. And I started this whole thing when I was like, I think 20. So I'm, I'm 23 right now. And I started this almost three years ago, this whole vision about startup. So I wish if I was 10 or 12, when you know, like I was at the prime of having, trying out things without having any strings attached, you can just do whatever you want, no one cares. Even if you break, the maximum someone can do is, you know, like shout at you or beat you and you just cry, it's over. Now you take that kind of, you break something, you have to pay for it. You cannot just throw an iPhone and say, oh, I broke it, oops. You can't say that anymore. So, yeah, I mean, with that, I would like to end my talk. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Okay, can, can I just say that, that that's very inspiring. Okay, um, you may not know this, and at 23 years old, you're, you're, you're at the beginning of your life's journey, but what the, the story that you've told and some of the th lessons you've learned, I can, I can look you in the eye and I'll say, you'll do all right. You'll be okay. Okay? I'm just Thanks. telling you. There are people in my age group who haven't learned those lessons yet. And these are things that your GPA scores will not okay. teach you. Yeah, I completely agree with that. Yeah. Okay? So, best of luck to him because I, 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 th I think it's a great idea. And, Thanks. you know. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, okay, so I, I'm, I just saw chance upon him on Facebook and I thought, you know, here's a young man who's like so enthusiastic and... You presented well, man. I mean, Thanks. like that's that's a heartfelt story. Okay, thank you. Um,